This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is for the course ME 273 Statics, and we use the book Statics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's lecture is on 3.4, three-dimensional force systems. After today, you will be able to solve 3D particle equilibrium problems by drawing a 3D free body diagram and applying the three scalar equations which are based on one vector equation uh, of equilibrium. We'll look at some applications, uh, talk about equations of equilibrium, and then do some problem solving. So let's look at an application. Let's uh, say you know the weight of this uh, electromagnet here and its load that it's carrying. How can you find the forces in these three chains? You need to know those forces so you can choose the correct chain so that it will not fail. And here we have a shear leg derrick. Um, it's designed to lift the maximum of 200 kilograms of fish. So how can you analyze this offset distance here, which would be in this case four meters, but how does that change, if that changes, how does it affect the tension in the uh, cable DB and the forces in these two members BA and BC. You'll need to know those so you can design the cord and the members AB and BC. So in section 3.1 we stated that the necessary and sufficient condition for particle equilibrium is the summation of forces is equal to zero. And this is summation of forces as a vector. In the case of three-dimensional force systems, we can resolve the forces into their respective i, j, k components so that we can write the summation of forces in the x direction in the i plus summation of forces in the y direction in j plus summation of forces in the z direction in the k is equal to zero. And from that you can get three scalar equations, uh, which would be summation of forces in the x is equal to zero, uh, summation of forces in the y is equal to zero, and summation of forces in the z is equal to zero. These three equations state that the algebraic sum of the components of all the forces acting on the particle along each of the coordinate axes must be zero. Using them, we can solve for at most three unknowns in 2D, we can only solve for two unknowns. In 3D, you can solve for three unknowns because now we have three equations. So these unknowns are generally uh, represented as coordinate direction angles or magnitudes of forces shown on the particle's free body diagram. So let's do some examples. So in this first example, we have the four, four forces in geometry shown. So we've got um, a force in the cable AB, which is along the x-axis. We've got a force AD, and it looks like there that we are given the coordinate direction angles, right? So, and then we have uh, AC. And in this case, uh, we need to use the projection technique in order to break AC into its Cartesian components. And this is similar to what we did in chapter two, so you shouldn't have any problem writing the, the Cartesian vectors AB, AD, AC. So we're going to draw that free body diagram, write all the vectors in Cartesian form, and apply the uh, three equilibrium equations to solve for the tension in the cables. OK, so let's take these uh, TB as a vector in Cartesian form. Uh, TB is all along the x-axis. So it's the magnitude of TB in the i direction. And let's do TC. So uh, TC sub Z is going to be equal to, we have this right triangle that goes like this. So TC sub Z is the magnitude of TC times the sine of 60. And this vector in the XY plane, I'm calling that F prime. And F prime is equal to TC times cosine of 60. Furthermore, F prime, can, it's now in the XY plane. So we can break it up into its x and y components. So uh, Tc sub x 
is equal to uh, f prime, which is Tc cosine of 60, uh, times the uh, cosine of 60. And that, of course, is going to be in the negative x direction. And then um, Tc sub y in the y direction is equal to uh, f prime, which is Tc cosine of 60 times the sine of 60. Now let's break up uh, Td into its, well we can now write uh, Tc as a Cartesian vector, right? We can say it is equal to uh, minus T sub C cosine of 60, cosine of 60, um, plus Tc, I'm just going to write C for cosine, cosine of 60, S sine of 60, uh, this is in the I direction, this is in the J direction, and in the z direction, we have t sub c sine of 60. Okay. So that's t sub c as a uh, Cartesian vector. Now let's do td. Let's, let's investigate. These look like coordinate direction angles here. Um, they're always measured from the positive x, y, z axis. So let's see what we have. So it looks like um, alpha is 120 degrees. And beta is from the positive y-axis. Um, now it's 60 degrees, right, from the negative y-axis. So therefore, it's 120 degrees from the positive y-axis. And z, uh, gamma is measured from the positive z, and it's 45. So that means that... Um, T sub D is equal to the magnitude of T D times cosine of 120. And write this as a vector. And so that's in the I direction. Um, plus the magnitude of T D times cosine of 120 in the J direction. Now alpha and beta are both 120. Uh, plus T D times uh, cosine of 45 in the K. Okay, so now we have all the unknown vectors as Cartesian vectors. Now the weight is, uh, of course, uh, minus 300 K. Uh, and that was in pounds. Okay, now that we have all three vectors, or four vectors if you count the weight, in Cartesian form, we can write out the uh, equilibrium equations. So the summation of forces in the x then is equal to uh, t sub b minus 0 0.25 times t sub c minus 0 0.5 t sub d, and that equals 0. And summation of forces in the y and that is uh, 0 0.433 t sub c minus 0 0.5 t sub d, and that equals 0. And summation of forces in the z is equal to 0 0.866 t sub c plus 0 0.707 t sub d minus 300 equals 0. We have three equations, three unknowns, and we can solve those simultaneously, and the answers are T sub C is 203 pounds, T sub D is 176 pounds, and T sub B is 139 pounds. So let's do another problem. And in this case, we had this 400-pound uh, crate and it's uh, in equilibrium and it's supported by two cables between A and AC, AB and AC, and the strut AD. Find the tension in each of the cables and the force developed along the strut AD. So we're going to draw a free body diagram of point A, and we're going to um, represent the unknown forces S sub B, F sub C, and S sub D. We're going to write those forces in Cartesian vector form and then apply the equilibrium equations
to solve for the three unknowns. Okay, so here is the uh, free body diagram of point A. I left off the dimensions because it would have made this uh, way too cluttered. We'll pull the dimensions off of this figure here. Uh, we need those dimensions because we're using the position vector approach to writing the Cartesian vector forms. So let's do F B first. So F sub B as a vector is equal to the magnitude of F sub B times the position vector between A and B. So R A, A B divided by the magnitude of that same vector. So this is equal to F sub B times. Now we're on A we want to get to B. That's the vector R A B. We're on A we want to get to B. How far do I have to go in the X direction? Well, I'm on A. I want to get back to here. Let's see. I want to get over to B, actually. So it's 2 feet, right? So it's actually minus 2i. Minus 2i. And how far in the J direction do we need to go? Um, so it looks like we need to go minus 6 feet to get back to the XC plane. So it's minus 6j. And how far in the j direct, or k direction rather? Well, I'm already 2.5 feet above the XY plane. Point B is 4 feet above. So the answer is 4 minus 2.5 or 1.5, and, and it's positive. And this is all divided by the magnitude of that same vector, so minus 2 squared plus minus 6 squared plus 1.5 squared. So this comes out to be uh, minus 0 0.3077 in the i. This is uh, f sub b out here. So the vector f b is equal to the magnitude of f b times minus 0 0.3077i minus 0.9231j um, plus 0 0.2308 in the k. Okay, so that's f sub b. Now let's do uh, f sub c. So f sub c as a vector is equal to the magnitude of f sub c times the vector between a and c. So I'm on a and I want to get to c. So it's r a c divided by the magnitude of r a c. So this is equal to f sub c uh, times, now I'm on a and I want to get to c. This is the position vector r sub a c, a and I want to get to c. So how far in the I direction do I need to go? Well, it looks like I need to go two feet, and that's positive. So plus uh, two i. How far in the y or j direction? Well, I want a. I want to get back to c. So again, it's this uh, minus six j. And on a, I want to get over to c. Well, a is already two and a half feet from the xy plane. C is five and a half feet from the x y plane. So subtract those two and we get uh, plus 3k. And this gets all divided by the magnitude of that vector. So 2 squared plus minus 6 squared plus 3 squared. So let's write out this vector in Cartesian form. So F sub C comes out to be 0 0.2. 857 in the i, and of course this is all times s of c, uh, minus 0 0.8571j uh, plus 0 0.4286 in the k. So there's s sub c as a vector. Now let's do the last one, f sub d. So f sub d is a vector is equal to its magnitude times the vector uh, between A and D. So I'm on A, I want to get to D, divided by the magnitude of that vector. So this equals uh, F sub D times, now I want the vector R, A, D. I'm on A, I want to get over to D. How far in the X direction do I need to move? It looks like zero because uh, 
the strut AD is in the YZ plane. So there's no uh, I component of that vector RAD. Uh, how far in the J direction do I need to move? I'm on A, I don't want to get back to D. It looks like it's minus 6. Minus 6 in the J. And how far in the Z direction? Well, I'm on A, and I'm going to get down to D, which is at the origin, so I have to go down minus 2.5 feet. So that's minus 2.5 K. And all that gets divided by the square root of minus 6 squared plus minus 2.5 squared. So when you do that algebra there, you get F sub D is equal to the magnitude of F sub D times minus 0.9231J uh, minus 0.3846 in the K. Of course, the weight is equal to 400 pounds, and it's all in the uh, negative z direction, so the weight as a vector is minus 400 k pounds. So now we apply the three equations of equilibrium and solve for that problem. So uh, that comes out to be summation of forces in the x is equal to uh, minus 0.30. 7, 7, F sub B, uh, plus 0 0.2857 F sub C, and it's equal to 0. Some forces in the Y, and you get uh, minus 0 0.9231 F sub B, minus 0 0.8571 F sub C, plus 0.9231 F sub C, and that's equal to 0. And lastly, some forces in the Z, and that comes out to be 0 0.2308 F sub B, plus 0 0.4286 F sub C, plus 0 0.3 eight four six F sub D minus four hundred is equal to zero. Three equations, three unknowns, solve them simultaneously, and you get your answers. F sub B is equal to two hundred seventy four pounds. F sub C is equal to two ninety five pounds. And F sub D is equal to five hundred and forty seven pounds. This concludes the lecture on Chapter 3.4, Three-Dimensional Force Systems. The next video is in Chapter 4, 4.1, Moment of a Force, Scalar Notation, 4.2, Cross Products, 4.3, Moment of a Force in Vector Notation, and Principles of Moments. See you in cyberspace.